Rob left his wife Layla after she gave birth to a black baby boy. But 20 years later, you won't believe what happened. Layla clutched the helm of the ward's blue bedsheets, hot tears dripping down her eyes. As Rob furiously stormed towards her, his eyes shooting daggers. Look away. Look away now, a voice inside of her told her. Yet Layla's eyes remained fixated on Rob, who now looked nothing less like a monster from a horror movie. For a few seconds, Layla's eyes fell on the baby crying helplessly in her arms. The baby boy was a far cry from the baby she and Rob had expected. He was the very reason why Rob was now storming towards her, with so much hate in his eyes. Who fathered that baby? Rob roared, as soon as he got to Layla. I said who fathered that black baby? He screamed louder, before Layla knew what was happening. Rob's hands were tightly pressing around her neck. He was choking her with all his strength. Unable to talk, all Layla could do was plead for mercy, with her wary red eyes. You cheat. That baby isn't my son. You better take him to whoever his father is. I hate you. Rob screamed. Layla watched the ugly scene unfolding before her eyes with so much shock and pain in her heart. A part of her wanted to tell Rob that she was innocent of his cheating accusations, but another just wanted that violent man out of her sight as quickly as possible. Who was the man she loved and had loved for all these years? Who was the man who had struck her without even giving her the opportunity to defend herself? And where would she even start explaining from when she was even confused herself about the baby's black skin tone? Layla wondered. She was in such a terrible state of mind as she cried profusely that a nurse soon came in and took the still crying baby away from her. Layla cried herself to sleep that very evening. Three days later, Layla was discharged from the hospital. She boarded a taxi and returned home with her baby boy. But when Layla got into the apartment that she shared with Rob, something shocking lay in store for her. The whole place was as silent as a graveyard. At first, Layla had thought that Rob was already asleep in his room. So she laid the sleeping baby on the freshly painted crib in the living room and walked to Rob's room. When Layla got to the room, she gently opened the door and almost fainted with shock. The whole room was empty. Rob's stuff was all gone. No, this can't be happening to me. Layla screamed out in utter shock. Rob just can't leave me like that, not after all we've been through, Layla continued screaming. Then she sat on the bed and covered her face in her palms, just to get herself back a bit. She was feeling so dizzy and disoriented, as a result of the shock, that she feared she was going to faint. About 10 minutes later, Layla reached for her phone and dialed Rob's number. Layla heard the phone ringing, but there was no reply. She tried three more times, but got the same result. Layla then tossed the phone on the bed, laid down, and feeling really devastated, she went down memories lane. Layla remembered their early dating days, when Rob had fallen terribly sick with pneumonia. Layla had faked being sick at her workplace in order to get a sick leave, just so she could take very good care of Rob. Her tactic was successful, and she was given a two-week sick leave. Throughout those two weeks, Layla cared for the sick Rob 24-7. Every morning, she would arrive at the hospital. Layla would spend the whole day by Rob's side catering to his every need and keeping him company. She would then return home at night, only to return back to the hospital first thing the following morning. At the end of the two weeks, Rob had recovered enough. Rob then hugged her tightly, kissed her and swore that he would never leave her no matter what. You broke your promise, Layla said aloud to herself. You left me out in the cold when I needed you the most, Layla kept saying aloud. Memories of Rob filled her mind as she slowly drifted into a deep sleep. Throughout the remaining days of her maternal leave, Layla scarcely left her apartment. Amanda, her best friend, was the only person she confided in when she visited on the very first day to see the new baby. Amanda felt so much pity for Layla that she started visiting her almost every two days just to check up on her and the baby. Amanda really helped Layla cope with the depression and utter loneliness that she felt following Rob's departure. During one of such visits, Layla asked Amanda what perfect name she thought was fit for the baby. The two then argued over a lot of names until they finally settled on David. Soon, Layla's maternal leave was over and it was time to resume work. She worked as an accountant in a small-sized accounting firm. It wasn't easy for Layla to play the single parent role towards David. She had to drop him in a daycare home every morning before leaving for work and pick him up in the evenings after work. She felt very lonely and still missed Rob a lot but she remained resolute to be strong for David's sake. Barely three months after he left, Rob sued for divorce. Layla was devastated, but she simply let him go. After the divorce, Layla tried everything possible to forget about Rob for good and move on with her life. She focused on her work and baby and always tried to keep herself busy. 
But no matter how much Layla tried to forget about Rob, she just couldn't seem to forget about him. In fact, the more she tried to forget about Rob, the more she thought about him. Layla had really loved Rob so much. He was her only true love. Until George came into her life. The 32-year-old dashingly handsome George was a colleague of Layla's. They had always been close friends and confidants. George fell for Layla the first time he laid eyes on her. Layla on her part just saw George as a friend and the only person she could trust at her workplace. George had always desperately wished to be more than just friends with Layla. But when he learned that she was married, he kept to her boundaries. When he learned that Rob had left her and the way that he had left her, he was quite heartbroken that she had gone through such an horrifying treatment and was determined to help mend her broken heart. Perhaps this was fate, finally offering him a chance to be with Layla. Still, he knew he had to give her time. And truly for Layla, he had all the time in the world. Layla didn't make it any easier for George. She took out her frustrations at him and would often yell at him over the slightest issue. Just stop. I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want love. I don't have the strength to love again. Just go. Why don't you go? Why won't you just give up on me? Layla screamed at George one evening when he showed up at her doorstep. By then, it had been four years since George had been after her. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought I could give you the happiness that you deserved. George replied that cold night. Gently, he told her he would stop pestering her and that he hoped she would someday find the peace and happiness she so desperately sought. Six months flew by and George and Layla didn't contact each other. Even at work, they said nothing to each other. It was during this period that Layla came to understand just how much George meant to her. And with each passing day, she realized that she needed him more than she could have ever imagined. One evening, Layla, without thinking, jumped into her car and sped off to George's house. She just wanted to see him and tell him how much she had missed him. When she got to his house, she jumped out of her car, ran towards his door like a lost puppy that had finally found its way home. She knocked on the door, her heart racing very fast. After what felt like an eternity, the door came open and George stood speechless at the entrance. I'm back, Layla said, forcing back tears. The look in George's eyes was all the assurance he needed that George's feelings hadn't changed. And she was right. George pulled her into his arms, kissed her passionately and promised to never let her go. But would their love stand the test of time, or Layla was simply making another big mistake? Meanwhile, Rob had since remarried. He had married a pretty young lady he was dating at that time named Pamela, but the marriage was a match made in hell. Rob and Pamela never really had any close bond between themselves. For them, it was just pure lust and infatuation, which of course faded away just a few months into their marriage. Hence, their marriage was a loveless and unhappy one. The two were always quarreling and bickering. At last, after just two years of an unhappy marriage, the two just decided to go their separate ways. And that was how Rob became a double divorcee in the space of two years. With time, Layla gradually but surely started opening her heart to George. He loved and adored her like a goddess. Layla reciprocated George's love too. Above all, Layla was really pleased to see the way David took to George at once. David would always be all over George like a rash whenever he sighted him. George himself was never tired of playing with David. Moreover, when David started talking, he started calling George daddy and what a daddy George was to him. He loved and cared for David like his own son. Layla was so pleased. She had always wanted David to grow up with a father figure. George had really proven himself as the perfect stepfather to David. So when he finally popped a question to Layla, she said a big yes to him. Two months later, they were married. George and Layla had quite a blissful marriage and together they raised David into a well-disciplined, intelligent young man. It had been 20 years since Rob abandoned Layla. George and Layla were still together and their love remained evergreen. David was in college studying accounting. He had grown into a handsome, intelligent young man. As for Rob, he suddenly fell terribly sick. For months, he was in and out of the hospital until test results showed that he had leukemia and he was admitted. The doctors tried their very best for Rob, but to no avail. His condition just kept worsening. Three months later, Rob was literally dying and needed an urgent bone marrow transplant to save his life. His three best friends all agreed to donate their bone marrow to him, but when they were tested, it turned out that none of them was a match for Rob. The doctors then advised Rob to seek the bone marrow of a relative, as there's always a higher chance that related persons match more than unrelated persons. Rob was his parents' only child, and his father was long dead, so he only had his mom left. His mom, Jane, 
agreed at once to donate her bone marrow to Rob, but when she was tested, they weren't a match. And that was when Rob remembered Layla and the baby boy he had abandoned some 20 years ago. What if the baby boy is truly mine after all, Rob wondered. So with no other choice left, Rob sent Jane to go explain the situation of things to Layla. Both mother and son desperately hoped that David would miraculously be Rob's son. Layla heard the doorbell rang one early morning. She opened the door only to find a tired-looking Jane standing outside. As Layla opened the door, Jane immediately knelt down and started pleading with her to forgive Rob, amidst tears. Layla said nothing. Jane continued explaining to Layla that Rob was dying and needed a potential bone marrow transplant from David, whom Rob now believed was his son. It was a matter of life and death, and no matter how much hatred she felt for Rob, Layla pitied him. So she bluntly told Jane to give her the address to the hospital. Jane did so and left, still profusely thanking Layla as she walked away. Layla had another motive for helping Rob. She was fully aware that all the necessary tests including DNA would be carried out on David before the potential transplant. Hence, she wished to finally prove her innocence and put Rob to shame for accusing her of cheating. Layla told George about it, and he told her to do whatever she felt was the right thing to do. Then Layla called David and told him to come back home for something urgent. When David returned home, Layla told him everything about his origins and the current condition and request of his biological father. David was shocked beyond words. It took him quite a while to recover from the shock, but when he did so, he immediately agreed to donate his bone marrow to his biological father. David's decision was based on the fact that he desperately wanted to meet the father that rejected him, to show him that he was doing quite well for himself. Two days later, Layla and David arrived at the hospital where Rob was being treated. They both took one look at the very frail-looking, dying Bob and felt so much pity for him. On sighting them, Rob feebly greeted them warmly and tried to engage them in a conversation, but his efforts proved futile as Layla and David never said a single word to him. It was supposed to be a very emotional moment for Layla, seeing the man that she once loved 20 years after he abandoned her, but all the feelings she once had for Rob were gone, so she just felt indifferent. All the necessary tests were performed starting with DNA tests, which proved that David was Rob's son. Rob started crying like a baby when the information was relayed to him. Moreover, David was a perfect match to donate his bone marrow to Rob. The transplant was successfully performed a few days later. Jane knelt down and amply thanked Layla and David for saving Rob's life, but the duo said no single word to her. Two months later, Rob was fully recovered, and once he was discharged, he went to his mom, and they started digging deep into Rob's family history to uncover why David turned out black. After a lot of asking questions and looking at old family albums, they both discovered that Rob's paternal great-grandfather had actually been of mixed heritage, but the black gene had remained recessive in the family since then. The gene only became dominant in David, and that was why he turned out black. After the shocking revelation, Rob decided at once to go and apologize to Layla. The next Sunday, Rob drove over to Layla's home. He met her relaxing outside in their small garden, sipping orange juice and reading a magazine while taking in the fresh air. Layla was really shocked to see Rob, but she maintained an indifferent composure. Rob got out of his car and slowly walked over to the garden. When he got close enough to Layla, Rob knelt down before her and started pleading with her to forgive him, while trying hard to hold back his tears. Layla just stared at Rob indifferently as he spoke without saying a single word to him. Then a van immediately pulled into the compound. Rob and Layla quickly glanced towards the car, and out of the van jumped down George and David, teasing each other and laughing copiously. Then they started pulling out fishing equipment from the van. They had both gone fishing at a nearby lake, which was one of George's favorite hobbies. Darling, Layla shouted on top of her voice while waving towards George. George quickly glanced towards the garden from where the call came from and glimpsed the man kneeling there. It took him a few seconds to realize that it was Rob. Sending that his wife was uncomfortable with Rob's presence, George hurried towards Layla at once, while David followed closely behind them. When George got to Layla, he gave her a deep warm kiss. Then George asked her, while glancing suspiciously at Rob, Is everything okay, sweetheart? David was already there, and he was staring at Rob with so much hatred written on his face. Everything's fine, darling, Layla responded. With that, she rose from her seat and hugged George. Then, without even glancing back at the still kneeling Rob, the couple walked away from the garden, still locked in a tight embrace. David followed suit, 
Rob knelt there for what seemed like ages, looking dumbfounded with his mouth agape. He had never been so humiliated in his life before. When Rob finally recovered from the shock, he quietly rose up and left, feeling bitterly ashamed, frustrated and broken. Rob never fully recovered from that humiliating episode. He bitterly regretted losing Layla, the only woman that had truly loved him. Soon, Rob went into a severe depression and took to alcohol to drink away his problems. But the more he drank, the more he became ineffective at work. His boss even caught him snoring loudly one morning while there was a mountain of work briefs piled up on his desk, begging for his attention. That was the last straw that broke the camel's back. His boss fired him on the spot. Years passed and David graduated from college. Soon landed a mouth-watering job in a multinational accounting firm with a six-figure salary. Layla was overwhelmed with happiness that her son was successful. Four years later, David proposed to his longtime girlfriend Amy. She said a big yes and they fixed their wedding date. Rob, who was then a shadow of his former self, heard about the wedding from hearsay and decided to attend the wedding reception. But once he got to the entrance of the hall, he was stopped by two hefty unsmiling bouncers who asked him where he thought he was going. Rob was dressed in old tattered dirty clothes with unkempt hair and beard. He basically looked like a caveman. David is my son, Rob screamed at the bouncers as he attempted to force his way into the hall, but the bouncers, thinking that he must be either drunk, crazy or both, lifted him and harshly dropped him on the ground, a few meters away from the hall. Rob then decided to stand there and watch the wedding proceedings. Just then, David climbed up the stage and read a heartwarming letter he had written to Layla, thanking her for standing by him. He also did the same for George, which drew loud applause from the guests. At that point, Rob couldn't take it anymore. He felt so embittered that another man was taking the honor due to him, so he made another effort to force his way into the hall, while screaming loudly, Impossible! I'm his real biological father! This time, David heard him, but he denied him. Using the microphone, he announced that he did not know that evil man. Afterward, he asked the bouncers to throw Rob out. At once, they lifted him up and carried him outside the gate. Rob then sat at the pavement. He slowly walked there, sat down and wept, and how hard he wept. He desperately wished he could turn the hands of time. I'm glad Layla and David got the closure they deserved and that Rob regretted his actions. What do you think about David's decision to donate his bone marrow to save Rob despite everything he did to him? Feel free to share your comments in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.